Welcome to Chemisode Unit 3. This is on DNA, the second last part of our Chemisode series for Unit 1, Unit 3, sorry. Um, DNA, let's have a look at what it is. It's deoxyribonucleic acid. We are going to look at the structure of DNA and a bit about how it can be used. <laughs> Here is what we look at, where it is, where the DNA is located, what it looks like, so the structure, what holds it together, so how it comes together and what bonds form it together and where those bonds form. And then lastly, we could look at a bit of the application and how we can use DNA. Um, so let's get stuck straight into where DNA is located. So these notes, um, if you haven't got the notes that I'm referring to, the notes that um, this keynote or the PowerPoint presentation is, you can access it from the Edmodo website. The Edmodo website is a online classroom as such and you can find the code for that online classroom in the note in the um, description of this video or you can probably also find it. I'll make it so it's an annotation here as well. So let's go have a look at where DNA is. This is DNA. DNA is found in the cells of um, cells of plants and animals, cells of living things. Basically inside a cell you have the nucleus which is the inside of the cell um, and inside the nucleus you have these things called chromosomes. Chromosomes are basically your genetic makeup. Um, they are where your genes are found. So chromosomes, if you break them into sections, they are called genes. So each chromosome contains a certain amount of genes which um, basically are the blueprint for what you are and who you are and each if we keep on unraveling chromosomes what actually it, they are are sections of DNA so if we look at this going back the other way DNA is the smallest um, part of it so DNA sections of DNA are called genes and then these genes make up chromosomes which are found in the nucleus of your cell cells um, which uh, inside your body. So that's about where DNA is found and what these, how DNA fits into the rest of this bio biology thing here. If you do year 12 biology, this is going to be a pretty, pretty straightforward area for you. Uh, we're not going to go into as much detail as we do in biology in terms of how chromosomes and genes work and stuff like that, but we go more into the structure and the chemistry side of DNA. So let's go into the next slide and let's look at um, a bit of the structure and what makes DNA actually DNA. What it looks like, this is DNA. DNA is a polymer made up of things called nucleotides. Each nucleotide, it consists of three things, a phosphate group, a deoxyribose sugar, and a nitrogen base. Now, if you can see down the bottom right-hand side there, you can see those three things there. The phosphate group is the um, phosphorus with the three oxygens around it. The ribose sugar is a pentagon-looking thing. Um, it's a type of um, a sugar, basically. And you also have the nitrogen base there. These things can be found in your data booklet. And that's what I'm going to show you in the next slide, the data booklet um, things and how we can look at how DNA comes together from the pieces in your data booklet. So let's have a look at our data booklet stuff here. All these um, molecules here, all these structures are, can be found in your VC data booklet. And I'm going to just quickly show you how we actually use them and where things actually bond on to each other. So if you're looking at this as your general structure for a nucleotide, okay, your center of your nucleotide is your deoxyribose sugar. This is your center of your nucleotide because you have one part which bonds to your phosphate group and another part which bonds to your nitrogen base. The deoxyribose sugar can be labeled from carbon number one, two, three, four, and five. Now, where the nitrogen base attaches to is carbon number one. In your data booklet, it's the one on the right-hand side. So this OH here is where your nitrogen bases will attach to. Your nitrogen bases will always attach on the bottom right-hand corner or the bottom right-hand NH group. So this is where your nitrogen bases will attach to your deoxyribose sugar to form part of your nucleotide. If you come around one, two, three, four, five, 
Five is where one part of your phosphate group will attach to. So part of your phosphate group will attach to here. And then what can happen on carbon number three down the bottom here, you can have another phosphate group attached to it. So what you can actually have is, or what DNA is, is a polymer of nucleotides going all the way down here. So we have a phosphate group here at carbon number five, and you'll also have another phosphate group coming off your number three carbon. And then you'll have another deoxyribosugar, and then you'll have another nuclear um, nitrogen base, and so on and so forth. But remember, this is where all the bonds form. Your um, nitrogen bases attach to carbon number one, and your phosphate groups attach to number five and three. Just think of the odd numbers, if you will. That, that will help you as well. And obviously, your, nitrogen, your phosphate group attaches where your oxygens are here. Together, um, this is what happens. We get our nitrogen base and our carbon number three, OH, come together to form a link and you get water coming out of that link here. So it's a condensation reaction happening. So you get water being expelled. From your phosphate and your deoxyribosugar, even though it says O negative, you can actually think about this as being an OH group on this phosphate. What will happen is another condensation re reaction will happen and you'll get water coming out from here, from your phosphate and deoxyribose. So each nucleotide, it's made from two condensation reactions between the deoxyribosugar and phosphate and a nitrogen base. And this is what happens when you join it in a certain way. This is one nucleotide, okay? And depending on what nucleotide you have, what nitrogen base is what the nucleotide will be called. So here, this little linkage here between the phosphate and the deoxyribosugar, this is known as a diphosphoester, okay? Diphosphoester linkage. Putting it together properly, um, fully now, we get our double helix happening. So we have two strands of these nucleotides curling around. I'll just read it here. DNA contains two strands of nucleotides. Each strand is made from a long chain of nucleotides joined together by an ester covalent bond. So the diphosphoester here is what joins the backbone together. The two strands are linked together through hydrogen bonding between nitrogen base pairs, which is, goes on in the next um, slide. I'll talk about the hydrogen bonding a bit more. But you can see here, we've got a nitrogen base here and a nitrogen base here. What holds these two together is hydrogen bonding. So the reason you get this double helix spinning around, or the reason you get these two strands always together, is due to them being hydrogen bonded between nitrogen base pairs. At each end of a strand is either a phosphate group, which will be denoted, denoted as five, or a hydroxy group, which is denoted as three. This doesn't really matter too much in chemistry as such. I think they care about it more in um, biology, um, but in Chemistry, what you need to know is if you have a 5 end up here, a phosphate group here, which are denoted as a P here, moving all the way down, at the other end you'll have your sugar, your hydroxy group here. And likewise, these two complement each other really well. So 5 is complemented by 3. So if you've got a 5 at one end, you've got a 3 on the other strand at the same end. Now, let's look at this hydrogen bonding stuff. Your nitrogen bases are paired up. So every time you have an A or adenine, you'll have a thymine. Every time you have a guanine, the opposite strand will have a cytosine. So adenine and thymine link together through two hydrogen bonds. Please change these around. I might actually change these around now so you know. So adenine and thymine link together through two hydrogen bonds. And they form here and here. So that's what holds the adenine and thymine together. On your data booklet, your adenine and thymine, you have these two areas which form hydrogen bonds with each other. So it's these two. Okay, So those are the two that form the hydrogen bonds together. In your guanine and cytosine, you have three hydrogen bonds being formed between your nitrogen base pa pairs. Cytosine has these three areas which form um, your, what are they called, your hydrogen bonds, and guanine has these three areas 
which form your um, hydrogen bonds. So you need to know where these hydrogen bonds form. It's between the NH2 and the double bond to O, and it's between the nitrogen and the NH group here. So you can see that here is these two, and just here is these two here. Likewise with your guanine and cytosine, you have need to know which ones match up. And it is actually quite well done for you in um, your data booklet because you can see that will match with that, that will match with that, that will match with that. Just remember how to use your data booklet properly. Now, um, what's next? So these problems I've got here are um, generic problems that you can have with DNA. And I'll go over some of the stuff and cover some of the stuff that we've done so far with DNA. What it says, the first thing here, is a strand of DNA contains the following nitrogen bases. What is the complementary strand? This is a very, very simple question. However, um, it, I've seen one of these, I think it was on last year's exam. Simple as it may be, they are exam questions. So if you have a 3-A-T-G-C-T-A-5, what will be on the other side? Well, it's simply the opposite of what the pairs are. So the 3 will match up with the 5, A will match up with T, T will match up with A, G will match up with C, and so forth. So you get a 5-T-A-C-G-A-T-3 strand of DNA. So basically you're just matching it up with the complementary base here. Make sure you write your C's and G's really clear because sometimes they can get mixed up. So be really careful with that. How many hydrogen bonds would be present in um, this section of DNA? So obviously I've written that incorrectly, but you get the idea. So how many bond, hydrogen bonds would be holding this together? Well, every A and T pair has two and every C and G has three. So what we need to look at is two, two, 3, 3, 2, 2 makes up a magical total of 14 hydrogen bonds will link this section of DNA together. So this will hold, be held together by 14 hydrogen bonds because we just look at how many hydrogen bonds are in um, adenine and thymine. That's 2. Adenine and thymine again, 2. Guanine and cytosine, 3. Cytosine and guanine, 3. Thymine and adenine, 2. Adenine and thymine, 2. So that's how we get these numbers here, just add up how many there are. The next section is a bit more interesting, is how many waters would be needed to completely hydrolyze this section of DNA. So hydrolyze means basically break it up into your different um, components. So how many would be needed to break it up into um, phosphate, deoxyribose and nitrogen bases. To do this question, what I like to do is look at one strand first of all, and then multiply it to get my two strands for my whole section. So if I look at one strand, it's got one, two, three, four, five, six monomers in it. It's got six nucleotides, I should say. To break one strand into separate nucleotides, I would need one water to break this one, two waters to break this one, three waters to break it here, four waters to break it here, and five waters. Need to break it into separate nucleotides is five waters. Now, that's just nucleotides. Each nucleotide, as you know, is um, made up of three little monomers, your phosphate, your um, deoxyribose sugar, and your nitrogen base. So to break up each nucleotide takes two waters. I've got six nucleotides, so that means I'll need six times two waters. So here's my little um, working out for it. Five waters here, five to break apart into separate nucleotides. So to break it up into an A nucleotide, a T nucleotide, a G nucleotide, a C nucleotide, a T nucleotide. That is five waters to break that up into those. And then I've got to break up each nucleotide will take two waters and I've got six nucleotides. So six times two is 12 plus five is 17 in each strand. And then what I need to do is multiply it by two because I've got two strands. So to break up this strand will take 17, to break up this strand will take 17. So in total, to completely hydrolyze this section of DNA 
is 32 waters. And that is one of the questions that I've seen on an exam as well. So these are exam style questions and this is how to go about it and the thinking that needs to come into contact and into play when you're looking at hydrolyzing and you're looking at how many hydrogen bonds are there. What I suggest you do now is go off and try and actually draw um, your four nucleotides that you'll have. So if you go back and look at um, this slide um, here, just think about and draw out what each nucleotide will look like. What will a nucleotide with this nitrogen base look like? So put it all together. And then after that, we'll go along and look at um, how we use DNA in the second podcast. So deoxyribonucleic acid, you've looked at the structure, you've looked at what holds it together, and now oh, you've looked at where it is as well. And next podcast will be, or next video, will be how we can use it. Until then, happy studying.